Thank you everyone. So my presentation is about Beehive and GPU pass-through. So first of all, let me introduce myself. So my name is Corbin Kuhner. I'm a software developer and um, yeah, mainly developing for x86 and um, developing uh, hypervisor technologies. And I'm working for backup automation and back of automation uh, does industrial automation and pc based control so uh, yeah back of does everyone everything for industrial automation so starting from uh, from panels uh, pcs io controls drives and we also uh, provide software and uh, we're interested in gpu pass through because um, yeah since our founding we are using Windows as operating system and we integrate our software into the Windows system. And now we want to move on and don't use Windows uh, to integrate our software anymore. So we decided to um, yeah, use FreeBSD and now we are integrating the software into FreeBSD. And, but our customers, um, yeah, they are familiar with Windows and they want Windows on the machines. So we're using the uh, Beehive hypervisor to start a Windows VM and gives the yeah, user uh, a machine which looks like a Windows machine, but uh, it uses yeah, FreeBSD with the hypervisor. Okay, so move on with the interesting part. Um, I will start with a short live demonstration how this GPU pass works. Um, then I will tell what's new because um, yeah, this presentation is a follow-up of my presentation in uh, 2021 uh, and the vendors dev uh, vendor summit. And at the end, I give some instructions how all of you can uh, test GPU pass through. Okay, for my live demonstration, I'm using. Uh, yeah, a system with an iCore 7 uh, PC, so it looks like this device. And uh, yeah, so I'm using the integrated graphics and pass it to the uh, Windows VM. Okay, so let's move on with the live demonstration. Um, okay, so for the live demonstration, I've connected. Um, uh, a KVM switch to uh, um, yeah one to my device, and so I've also prepared an SSH session to the device. So first of all, we can uh, look at all the PCI devices. So with PCI conf, and there we got uh, yeah our. Um, VGA device, so our uh, GPU, and because we also want to control this um, VM, we also are interested in the USB device, so the XHDI device, so we want to pass through both of these devices. Okay, so first of all, we have to load the VMM kernel driver, and uh, if you have done this, uh, we have to make sure that no yeah, other device uses our G no, no other software uses our GPU and the USB device. So there's a special uh, driver for uh, in FreeBSD, so it's called PPT. So we can use devctl to um, detach uh, the driver from the device. So we're interested in the uh, PCI device. And 20, so we call the CDL detach from both for both devices. And after this, we can use uh, dev CTL to set the PC, uh, PPT driver to both devices, so for device 20 and 2. And uh, yeah, and now we're done. So if we can check PCI comp again. So now we see that the GPU and the USB device is connected to the PPT driver. And yeah, now we can just start Beehive. So we add some uh, flags to the Beehive core. Let's find some cores. 
uh, some memory and yeah what we need is uh, we always need the host bridge uh, at slot zero then we need uh, a disk so i've prepared the windows disk uh, oops next So next we add the GPU, so we can just use uh, add the password device. And there's some special about this uh, GPU, which I will talk later about. So um, there's an uh, ROM option, and if you add the ROM option, you can out add uh, expansion ROM to the GPU. And here I'm using the GOV driver, and I yeah, mount this uh, later in my talk. So next we need the uh, USB device, the LPC device, and a boot, no, SCDIO, no. And lastly, the user local share receive. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have the Windows 10. Okay. Uh, what's missing? Boot from user local share. Oh, this. Okay. So, yeah, and UEF I you. Yeah. So, and if you're familiar with Behive, there's no special thing about this uh, Behive call except this ROM, but this is, uh, yeah, I will talk about later in this. So, now you can see that on my device the hypervisor starts up and you immediately get a graphical output from the VM and now the Windows VM starts and yeah um, it's Windows so it's take a while um, aware of this device physically at the moment uh, at the moment it's in our uh, country and there we have a yeah a small rack ah. and we have connected a kvm switch to it so that we uh yeah can see what's happening on the device yeah and uh if you check the um, task manager you will also see that the um, graphic card is detected by uh Windows and uh, you have also um, yeah, there are some benchmark tools and now I've installed just one of them to show you that you can even um, yeah run accelerated uh, graphics with this because here you can yeah run different benchmarks and uh, 420 so yeah and yeah direct x12 wouldn't work with uh, out accelerated graphics so we can just for example run this test and uh, yeah as you can see the run uh, test starts and it works so here we can use uh, accelerated graphics so yeah maybe wait a moment until it really starts okay and there it is yeah it's a bit laggy but i think it's more um issue with the network connection and not the gpu as you saw there was an fps counter with 400 uh, fps 
<laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's continue with the presentation. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've showed you that it works for Windows and I've also tested it for Linux. So, for example, here's an Ubuntu. VM and there also you can see that we are running in a Beehive VM but um, the device is um, detected and also the um, driver is attached and yeah <laughs> this also works and uh, I've the benchmark I've shown you I've run the complete benchmark and there you can see yeah for the um, 2D benchmark on the um, left side there's a Beehive VM on the right side is a native system and if you compare them both numbers you see that you get about 80% of the uh, full GPU performance in the VM and uh, yeah, it's very similar to 3D uh, graphics so um, there's even a bit better because you get about 90% of the uh, native GPU performance okay as I mentioned earlier, this is a follow-up of this vendor summit in 2021. And uh, yeah, there the state was that the for dedicated AMD graphics, it works on the current branch. Uh, yeah, but integrated graphics don't work. Um, dedicated in the graphics, I don't know because I never tested them. And um, so in upstream behind. Uh, on yeah, with my patches on our system, uh, for example, the integrated into GPU works as you have seen. Uh, okay, so let's start with dedicated uh, AMD graphics cards. So um, they only require standard PCI pass-through, um, but there's an exception for Linux and BSD because the driver there needs the video BIOS and um, yeah it is part of the PCI uh, specification but it wasn't implemented in Beehive but uh, I've added this um, uh, this support and it's also upstreamed and supported in uh, 30.1 but um, yeah, th there's one issue and that's not Beehive related uh, it's um, OVMS, so uh, boot room related, because um, the video BIOS is a bit special because the BIOS have to um, yeah shadow this uh, video BIOS, and the um, operating system searches for this shadow copy, and if OVMF doesn't do it, the um, yeah guess VM wouldn't uh, find the video BIOS and can't use it. So, um, yeah, it's supported on the Beehive side, but not on the guest side, sadly. Um, yeah, that's the current state for AMD graphics. And for integrated graphics, um, yeah, I don't know what, what is required. I've tried it and I hadn't success until yet. I've also tried to um, pass through it on other hypervisors like QEMU which uh, yeah, often has some more features, but uh, even on QEMU, I wasn't able to pass through the integrated graphics of my devices. So yeah, I don't know what they're missing. And uh, the next device would, is the dedicated Intel gra uh, graphic devices. But as I mentioned earlier, I haven't tested it yet. I don't know if they work or if not. Um, yeah, we have to see. And the um, yeah the integrated um, graphics for Intel they work on Linux and BSD in upstream, but not for Windows. Um, yeah, and if you want to know what's missing, uh, the problem is says that the integrated graphics have some non-standard PCI resources, and you have to handle them. And yes. Yeah, the Linux and BSD driver don't care, and I don't know, maybe they don't use them, but the Linux driver does. So first of all, there's a so-called graphics store memory, 
and we have to make sure that this memory is allocated and yeah, in some way assigned to the um, device. And there's also uh, the so-called op region. Um, and yeah, you also have to allocate and assign it, but you also have to use the host op region because there are some information about the configuration which should be used for the uh, graphic card. And this has to match with the host configuration, otherwise um, yeah, it don't work correctly. And the last one, uh, the last common graphic cards are from yeah. NVIDIA, so dedicated uh, graphic cards. But um, yeah, they are still, I have tried it a bit, but didn't work much on it, so it's still work in progress. Okay, so if we um, look how um, we continued, so on the vendor summit, only dedicated AMD graphic card works in current. Now they work in 13.1. And um, yeah, this is one exception for Linux and that the uh, guest doesn't work. And uh, the integrated Intel graphic card works for Linux and BSD. Okay. So now let's move on how to test this uh, by your own. And I will start with the GOP driver, which I mentioned in my live demonstration. So um, if you boot up your machine, first of all, the Uf EFI starts. Then um, the UFI tries to find and uh, start the bootloader. And the bootloader uh, tries to find and boot the uh, final operating system. And uh, yeah, this could take up some time. And um, yeah, all of you know that on normal systems, you can enter your BIOS and modify settings and so on. And responsible for this graphical output is the so-called GOP driver. And so at some point in the UFI stage, the GOP driver um, gets started and is responsible for graphical output and then at one time when the o OS starts uh, the operating system driver will, um, will uh, continue so it is not required to use the GOP driver but um, yeah, if you want to get graphical output while you're in the boot stage you have to use it so um, and of course um, now the question is how you get the GOP driver and uh, for AMD and NVIDIA um, they are dedicated graphic cards so they have to um, chip the GOP driver with their video BIOS which uh, yeah, is somewhere on the um, cards so there are some ways to dump this video BIOS but for integrated Intel graphics there's no really common way and even Intel with their own Acron hypervisor say that you have to ask your board manufacturer for the GOP driver. Um, yeah, but for AMD and Intel, um, sadly, so I'm not aware of any method to dump it on uh, FreeBSD, but for example on Linux, there you can use the ZFS uh, to um, dump the uh, yeah, video BIOS or on Windows there's a tool called GPU Z and there you have an option to save the video BIOS to a file and yeah but maybe it's a bit harder to dump it with, well, um, and but there are also some uh, video BIOS files online and um, but you have to take care that you use the same version because if there's a match, mismatch between the version you're using on the host system and the guest system um, yeah I haven't tried it but I can imagine that this can get you into trouble and <laughs> so and yeah to edit it's relatively simple I've did it in the uh, demonstration you just add the RAM option and uh, yeah append the pass to your uh, GOP driver okay so let's start with specific instructions for the uh, different kinds of graphic cards so if you want to test um, GPU pass-through with AMD cards uh, yeah just use the pass-through um, option like you do with any other um, 
if I was, so maybe one hint there because um, while you you need the operating system driver to get if you don't use the GOP driver. So if you want to install a VM, there's no so on Windows there's mostly no driver. So you first of all have to yeah create a VM with um, VNC or um, yeah if you have a VM you can set up remote desktop so that you can remotely connect to the VM and then attach the uh, graphic card and install the graphic cards driver. Okay, but yeah, so on Linux and BSD it doesn't work yet on upstream, so you have to uh, do some patches to the OVMF and uh, from back off we have a, a GitHub repository and there we have an uh, EDK2 um, fork and yeah, I have a um, branch which is called Fab Corvin K and um, then the release date of the EDK2 and you can use this branch to build your own uh, OVMF which uh, works for GPU pass-through or um, I also have an uh, open uh, patch on Fabricator and there is also a binary file so you don't have to compile um, the OVMF by your own you can just download it and then uh, yeah you have to attach your own modified OVMF to as uh, to the boot ROM option, and of course, yeah, you have to append the ROM option to your pass through uh, line. Okay, and the steps for integrated into graphics are very similar. So you also have to use the patched OVMF, but you also have to um, rebuild Beehive. And then you also have the option to either use my fabricator uh, patch or you can use our GitHub repository and um, yeah to get the get the same um, Beehive version which I'm using. But um, there are some things you um, uh, take care of if you um, want to start the VM with um, Intel CPUs. So first of all, you have to use um, the ICPI tables, which are built from Beehive. Because normally, if you run a boot from, they are used from the EDK2, but they don't match. So um, yeah, the Windows driver won't be able to uh, use the GPU device. And you also uh, have to take care of the slot of the uh, where you attach the GPU, because yeah. Um, it's an integrated GPU and Intel always attached it at slot 2. So there are yeah, many drivers uh, which um, say, oh, the integrated graphics is always on slot 2 and they don't check for any other devices. So, um, and there are also some issues on Windows if you don't use slot 31 for the APC device. And yeah, lastly, you have to use the boot ROM. So, Things like Beehive Load or Grab to Beehive uh, won't work um, yeah, with GPU pass-through. Okay, and yeah, of course, it's not required, but if you want uh, POS output, uh, you have to attach the GOP driver. Um, yeah, the Intel and BSD side is a bit uh, easier because you can just, um, yeah, Normal, like you normally do, attach the Intel GPU as password device, and this also works on upstream. And um, yeah, so as a short summary, if you uh, want to test these, uh, all these things, uh, you can take first of all take a look at my fabricator patch. Then you can um, also check our uh, GitHub repository from Backoff and yeah, from uh, FreeBSD and ADK2. And if you have some questions, you can also uh, mail me. Okay, so thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions, thank you. Um, there is a vegan version available if you need this. Mm -hmm. uh, but if not, um, 
I'm sure there's lots of questions, but I'm here, so I'm going to ask mine first. What's blocking this landing? Like, why? Uh, what do we need to do to get into the <laughs> Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> 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 so it's a complicated topic and it's also a bigger patch and um, yeah and so it's a bit uh, more complicated to um, yeah merge all of this stuff and uh, and also I think on QEMU the um, yeah the whole um, GPU pass through with integrated Intel uh, devices is a bit complicated because yeah they don't like to uh, merge some of the uh, patches because they are more yeah Intel does something a bit strange because it's an inter uh, integrated GPU so it's always there and so you can include some drivers in the BIOS instead of providing a good uh, video BIOS for the integrated and so on and so it's a bit hard I so hope even the Linux community don't want it to uh, merge um, some of um, those patches okay. yes yes I guess the talk I thought was amazing you just stuck into the demo um, after my few minutes Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that you match the uh, Beehive uh, PCI IDs with apart from the host PCI IDs, is that important? The two um, yeah. So for the two, it is important because um, yeah, as I mentioned, some driver uh, use the. Um, the um, slot 2 for the Intel GPU so it's a fixed value and they don't scan the whole PCI bus um, but for the 20 it is not important it was just a choice from my side um, yeah um, maybe I can take a step back yeah so here I marked I don't know if you see that this is green the two <laughs> um, yeah so this uh, 31 is important um, and this too is important to work properly on Windows VMs. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about, so I'm always using slot 2 to uh, don't have any issues, so I don't test it much. I know that the GOP driver has problems if it don't, isn't attached to 2. I don't know if the operating system driver has problems. Um, yeah, but... Um, I always attach it just the two, and then I don't have any problems. Yeah? yeah. How are your users connecting to those uh, workstations? Are they physically on their desk connected to the screens, or is it through VMC? Or? So, you mean how I manage the um, live demonstration? No, so I mean, think you, you mean our end users. <laughs> the, the, the end users mm. that are using uh, this, uh, their Windows uh, workstation. Yeah. Or Windows. Mm -hmm. How do they access it? Is it um, like it was shown there or VNC or is it that physical thing? So yeah. no, no, but GPU pass through, you can just run it on your device. Yeah. So, um, when you go to the first, uh, to the first slide, where you show our devices, mm. it cannot be seen. No. Oh. So something where, uh, yeah. And on the left side, this is the canopy seen. Yeah. And um, this is this is the use case for our GPU pass to mm. um, to sell this device to a customer, run BSD on it for our real time um, ticket, and Keep the, the the display output um, from Windows and the and the and the touch screen is USB two, so it is passed through to the Windows machine. And so, actually, the end user will access the Windows. In the background, there's our Simcat uh, running the the real time stuff. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because the boot was 
Yeah, yeah you, you can just for example there's Chrome and Chrome has an add reboot uh, option and there you can just say add reboot run this behive command so if your machine uh, boots up uh, yeah, you see for a short moment the previous D screen and then the VM starts up and you get your VM screen yes can we switch back to to the previous ones to the beginners right? So like you you shut down the windows and set the, the devices back to the previous mm, not yet. Um but this is not a problem of Beehive. This is a problem of the um input driver. So um because um if you attach the so if you um, attach the Intel uh, GPU driver, everything is fine. If you detach it, everything is fine. If you attach it a second time, uh, the system crashes. <laughs> and <laughs> so, and the, the problem is normally you um, boot up, uh, you boot up. You have your Intel driver, then you detach it to use it for your Beehive VM. And if you're done, you would attach it a second time, and then your system would crash. And uh, I've also talked to someone who is uh, working on the um, BRM KMOD um, port, and he's also aware of this issue, but uh, there's no solution yet. Yes? Um, so I'm not sure what the problem is. I've once uh, take a look in the core dump and it looks like um, there was an issue with the um, driver naming because the Intel driver tries to um, attach a driver a second time with the same name and then it crashes and yeah yeah when it identifies to the first job device it's probably good at like yeah. going in and going back to Oh. Okay, thank you very much for it. Thank you.